So welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for June 15th, 2022. It is six o'clock uh, p.m. It's a hybrid meeting. So a meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures um, adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while a, an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person uh, in attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting at the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation. Noted below on the agenda, there's a uh, toll-free number if you want to dial in. It's 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and the passcode is 570012. And there's also a Zoom link. If you go to the Town of Deerfield website, on the bottom right is our calendar. You can click the link for the Zoom meeting and participate there. Um, just if you're on the phone, just hit star six for landlines um, to mute unless you're asking questions and just wait to speak until others are finished and just state your name and where you're from. So. Um, so we uh, have an agenda tonight. Uh, so I've opened the meeting. We have public comment. So um, any public here? No comment tonight. All right. We'll keep moving along. It's nice to have some public here. So thank you, Rocky. Um, so we don't have any scheduled hearings or appearances. Um, we have uh, select board um, reports or announcements. I will just start by uh, just, I wanted to uh, congratulate the South County Senior Center staff and um, Jennifer Remillard for do, putting on a, a wonderful, um, very nice, nice picnic, picnic oh, so today. Nice. It was yeah. just beautiful weather. It was so nice yep. to see it was 100 and maybe 30 something people out having a good time and um, That's having one of the biggest and, turnouts we've had. It was, it was so nice. Went out without a hitch and just wanted to thank Triad and Sheriff's Department, everybody who volunteered and donated food and, um, just, I know the seniors appreciated being together and um, it was just really nice to have everyone there. So um, do you have anything you wanna hit on? I, I just wanna say that it was lovely. Um, we had a successful meeting with um, uh, undersecretary or um, I think I'm hopefully getting his title correct. Yes, Juan Vega. Um, Juan, um, Juan Vega and um, Ashley Stoll. I think so. Stoll. Uh, Stolba. Stolba. Yep. Um, we're here yesterday and Natalie and Joe were here and um, Jim McGovern's aide, Kobe. And then we had um, a, for a successful Selectman's Association, Select Board Association meeting last night with Joe That's and great. Natalie again. Yep. And then I saw Joe here today. Yep, Joe senior, and Natalie is here. Both of them at the senior picnic again. And it was just like, oh my gosh, they are. They're representing Deerfield. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. And the so community is. Everywhere. We're hoping. Um, and I had a soil health meeting today um, at the state level. And, you know, Deerfield was mentioned multiple times as the only one in the entire Commonwealth that has a baseline soil health um, um, data collection. So. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's good Cutting work. Cutting edge again. Very good work. Thank you. Tim, do you want to add anything? Do you have anything? Um, I have a question, and that is, um, <clears throat> maybe we can take it up later. Uh, we get credit, uh, Carolyn, I think I've heard you mention this at other meetings, where we get credits for insurance uh, mm -hmm. if we take certain coursework. Yes. Yep. Um, you don't have to talk about it now, but uh, at some point tonight, I'd like to get a tutorial. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah. Generally when we do the um, my, there are courses that are offered through Maya and when we go to MMA conferences, they'll put on, they might do some others throughout the year. And um, if you take those, we get a de deduction. It, of it's, it's, um, insurance. it's risk management that what they're yeah. trying to do is transfer the risk by teaching you um, 
Safety, legal, legal, how to, how to manage your risk exposure. You're, what you're trying to do is reduce it so you have less loss. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, we can definitely. Okay. Work on we that. we try very hard to max out our credit. Yeah. It's built into our budget. So it's like we better. It's a must. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, so uh, let's, any Board of Health comments um, right now? I, I just want to say the um, ticks are extremely active. We're having a lot of activity coming through on the Maven that people are, have, are picking up diseases through our ticks. Um, I don't have a year end yet because we're getting towards the year end, but um, we'll get a year end report of tick activity, which you know will give us the disease load of ticks um, tested in Deerfield. Um, you know, the percentage, I mean, pre, it's been pretty um, steady, somewhere between 34 and 37% of our ticks have Lyme disease. What was very alarming is we've gone from 5% since we've been doing this, I mean, a half a percent since we've been doing this for um, 11 years, a half a percent to almost, it's 13.2% of our ticks now carry uh, addi those additional diseases like babalosis mm -hmm. and, really and all those things. And then you get really, really sick and it's wiping people out. So please, please, please be very um, conscientious about checking yourself if you've been outside to do a tick check. Our, we again, we, we town meeting voted again to subsidize tick testing. Mm -hmm. That's how we keep track of our disease loads on our ticks. And that gives you reassurance when you go to the, your doctor that you have a diseased, you know, you were bitten by a diseased tick. And then you can make sure you get, you know, antibiotics treatment or whatever your doctor would like to give you. But um, this gives you a peace of mind and it's really worth it. And it helps us keep track of what's going on, which is this negative trend, which is not good. But, um, and we're seeing cases um, of BA4 and BA5 in, um, out here now. Uh, we made it through the end of the school year. So this has been so great. Um, but that these South African variants are um, more evasive of our vaccine. So as you're waning in your coverage, um, you might get sick, but you're gonna get a mild. It's extremely mild when you get sick if you're vaccinated. So bottom line, get vaccinated, mm -hmm. keep your boosters current every four or five months. It's what's kind of what they're recommending, get a booster. Um, and just, re and just a reminder to everybody that we are, the Board of Health is keeping a um, confidential list of, of anybody that has long haul COVID. We're finding statewide it's about 20% and we are about 20% of our cases. We're now over a thousand cases and 20% of that is roughly, is what we're hearing anecdotally, um, is long haul COVID. So this is a huge disability bubble that's gonna hit our healthcare system. So again, please get vaccinated, reach out. I'm trying to help people get appointments through the healthcare system. And you know, the Bay State system is booked until almost Thanksgiving now. And it and it so it's really incredible. And you know, the state is hearing from us that it needs to be addressed. So hopefully just let us know. You don't need to even leave your name, but just say you're one of the people that have and, and list your symptoms. It's really important for us to keep uh, a track of your symptoms so that we can report that to DPH and demand somebody do something about it. Great. I just wanted to take a moment to thank Lisa White. Um, she's, you know, finishing up as our, as our nurse. She's been a nurse for many, many years. And um, our seniors have loved her. Our community has loved her. We have all loved her. And I met with her a little bit today to uh, thank her for her service. She's, uh, as we transition to a different nursing system, which we're, you know, we're interviewing and should have up and running, you know, by, by the first of the year, uh, first of July. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank her for all the work she's done um, to keep our, our residents healthy and safe and with a smile and always kind and uh, just miss her tremendously. And, um, wished her well and and we're and she's been you know we're just good transition we're working well together and transitioning caseloads and talking about where where people need help and not so um it's been really good i just want our, to say our that. nurse candidate was at the senior picnic today and 
um, talk to Triad. We're trying to update our um, homebound list and you know, most vulnerable population list um, hasn't been, COVID has been really hard to keep it up. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna, that's gonna be the number one priority of our um, new nurse. And I'm really, really excited about it. So she'll be at the senior center uh, at the church um, 10 to two, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting after the first of, she's, she's doing some transitioning time right now, but she'll be available to the seniors when, um, after July 1st. So the, um, I don't wanna, you know, minutes is always on the agenda. And I know this is a really rough subject. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't really wanna bring it up. Don't bring it up, we have a meeting. I got them home right now. You got them going now, great. Okay, doing. good, thank you so much. Um, so uh, we just need to get back on that just for various folks and stuff that we do. Um, not that we don't have videotape of every meeting and anybody can always we have do. access, but we do need to have a minute's record. So, so discussion items tonight, um, request for um, declaration of surplus equipment, this police radios, and we had a, a request from Chief Paturik um, to be, because we have transitioned away from the 400 megahertz to the 800 megahertz. And the, I just, again, thank FERCOG and Chief Paturik on getting that grant from the state and bringing that up. And that was extremely evident with the massive fire in Orange this last um, week. And um, the 800 system worked perfectly and they, everybody, everybody communicated, was everybody was on it. It worked really, really well. And there were I think 22 towns fighting that fire and then covering everybody's house that had to go firehouse that had to go. So it just worked really, really well. So, um, so these radios include the C, uh, CDM 1550 mobile radios removed from the cruisers, the HT 750s, the HT 1, uh, 1250s portable radios and the APX 6000 portable radios. None of them are able to be converted to the new 800 megahertz ban. Um, she said he will offer them um, to other public safety agencies that still operate on the 400 megahertz ban, such as Franklin County Sheriff's Office and the Greenfield Community College at no cost. So just want to take a, a, hear a motion to declare those surplus. Um, I will make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? I just want to say again, um, people don't realize it was several million dollars worth of um, money that yeah. John Pachorek single-handedly made happen. Mm, great. It was, great a, you know, other people helped, but. Oh, for sure. He, yeah. he, he's the one that made this happen. So Very it good. was amazing. Yep. So all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you so much. Um, next item to talk about is transfer station sticker sales. And I talked with um, Kevin today about this. He's got coverage for, so the issue is we're very limited in staff here. Um, so we're going to direct people to not come to the town hall like they normally do for dump stickers, um, but to pick them up at the transfer station. And every Saturday we're going to, I mean, I think during the weekdays are lighter, so they do sell them there, but on Saturdays, they're going to have a table set up like they normally do. This Saturday, we're still struggling getting coverage and Kevin's not quite sure if he'll be fully covered for that, but he does have the other, the other weekends covered. So we're trying to, you know, we're all short staff, but we're trying to make it work. Um, because it's just overwhelming with no help here at the office and they're just buried with so much to do. So we're directing everybody there. Do you want to add anything to that or do you, is that? That's pretty much what we had discussed. Yeah. Um, as long as we can find some coverage to sell them at the transfer station, yeah. according to the regular money and cash policy that they have, yeah. it would be helpful for staff because as you know, we're down a person, yep. and a, a person and a half in one department and a person in another. Yeah. So we tough. really don't have capacity. And most of the time, the comment was made to me, most of the time when people are disposing of their trash, they're often buying their trash bags. And yep. So stickers make sense to be up there yep. as well. Yep. And uh, so hopefully we'll do that. Um, we don't need to vote on anything like that. Um, just a well, direction we, by the... We need to let... The one thing I would say is we need to let the public know um, with some affirmation because transfer sticker sales jump for the next month. They do, they do. And so if we have a clear directive to people, yeah, the, the, um, yep. 
if it can't be this weekend, then beginning the next weekend, right before. Exactly. I would say do it the first weekend of, of July. Are you going to do it on Saturdays? Is that what yes, you Saturdays. Kevin and I weren't able to talk yes, about this. Yeah, he was talking Saturdays. He has enough coverage this weekend. He didn't coming up here. And, and they have been selling them up there recently, but it, it's, um, it's you got two attendees and they're trying to watch the bags going in and deal with people on bulky items. And it's, it's a lot of time to get your registration number and fill it all out, write it on the sticker. So it creates a big backlog. So they're going to set up a table like they normally do. Bud used to set up a table on the side and why sell them up them there. Right. Why don't we have customers write their information down? They do, uh, but there's a sheet, there's a form where you have to do Why sticker number, have... blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't know. we could make that form where you add the sticker number and then keep it in a, in yeah, other words, you speed could talk the process about up that. by having there the customer help them. There needs to be something like that because there's a, there's a registration number, then the sticker number, and then your address, and, and then the check amount, and so it's, there's a lot of stuff that goes along with it, but um please be patient people. I know it's a frustrating thing to wait on a Saturday, but um, it's, it needs to happen. So anyways, and, and so, obviously if everyone doesn't realize it is 70 bucks for the 70 bucks, 70 for, bucks the for the transfer thing. station. Sticker. Yep. And the bag stayed the same. I think it's 25 okay. bucks. Yes. And also I think it's an $8 for seniors. If they uh, want to upgrade from the small bag that they get, right. Mm -hmm. They do. So mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> To the big bags, right? Yeah, exactly. So, what day would we begin doing that? Um, let's let's see. see. Beginning Saturday, the twenty fifth. Yes, I think that's what he meant. Yeah, just he on did. Saturdays. Well, they sell them anytime up there because okay. it's a lot lighter traffic Tuesday and Thursday, I believe, uh, and they have been selling them right along. But the Saturdays are really the heavy. That's where they'll set up a table, I think, and be separate from Jim and. They'll have extra help up there to do it those okay, weekends so beginning through June July. June 25th, transfer station yep. sticker sales will take place at the transfer station. Yes, and not at town hall. And it's checks only. It is checks only. Yep. I think. Rocky. Is it still $10 for the official That's correct. Yep. If you live in at home and you want another sticker for another vehicle, it's, it's just, just an additional $10 for that sticker. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna call this consensus to begin this. Okay. Um, Atlas Farm one day liquor license request for June 18th. Are they have in their, their barbecue or what are they doing? They're yep, Solstice barbecue. barbecue, June 18th. Barbecue, yeah. Oh, nice. Um, I will make a motion to approve this. And they I have second it. Thank you. And they have all their insurance out yep. and good to go. Great. That sounds awesome. Sounds like a great time. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Let's just sign these now. So I, this is their regular thing. So, yeah. As far as I know, there's not been any issues. I'll make sure to sign it in the right place this time. <laughs> and I think, um, I think that. They've worked with Chief probably for parking or if they talk with not much. They've done that in the past where they check in. Parking will be on site in the fields. Okay. And on our parking lot. So they'll have if they must have got that squared away. Good. Jessica, did you want to say something or is oh no, I was just going to offer my um thoughts on the parking, just in case you were concerned about it. Oh. I just wanted, I forgot oh. that I wrote it on there, but I just wanted to yeah, sure. say that we're going to be, yeah, parking everybody back in the fields like we do um, for the pick your own strawberry. So it shouldn't be an issue at all. Wonderful. And thank you so much. Um, and yes. I know that we were a little bit um, like right under the wire with the insurance. So thanks for bearing with us there. You're no welcome. Problem. Quick question, it's Jessica. A lovely thing. Can, can you just That's clarify exactly. the location of the, of the barbecue? <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be um, right behind the store. So you can come in like you're going to come um, and do the you pick strawberries. And it's going to be in the field right behind uh, abutting the strawberry field. Right on five and 10. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Just wanted to clarify for folks who were familiar with the previous iterations oh, yeah. so that they don't end up at Atlas Farm. Absolutely. Yeah, down on River Road, right? <laughs> so that off, was a nice one last time. Road. Yeah, I remember doing that. Much closer yeah. to my home. So thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Um, 
I know Sarah will strangle me if we don't get the sewer commitment yes, done. Do so the we, sewer are, commitment. we have numbered. And there's actually a signature page in the signature. There is. Uh, let me grab that. So we have, this is the second um, sewer commitment for the year. And these are winter um, readings. So there are no uh, um, abatements for this one. This is typically, you know, in the summer readings, which we'll have, you know, later in the year um, for the next, for the first commitment of next year. Um, we have a, um, everybody gets an automatic abatement for your winter usage. This is not abated and it's um, what we base the second year on. So the second abatement's on. So, um, so we're hereby authorized to collect from 960 bills named on the commitment with the amount set against their respective names amounting in the aggregate of $692,094.42. Uh, to pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report of such payment to the town accountant. So um, let's see that, yep, I've given you the consumption is 36 million, 19,800 gallons and- Which is a little up. Yeah. In the last couple of years. It is. And there is uh, some information on history as well in the back. Um, you know what is surprising? Um, I would have thought it, it would have been higher during um, COVID, you know, 20 With people home and stuff more? Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you're talking 36 versus 34 versus 31. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like that would be correct, but yep. whatever. Hours to that it's true. <laughs> it's, you never know. Fascinating. Okay, so do, do I have a motion to approve? Um, I make that motion. And I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. So the next item is to uh, is to address um, uh, dog attacks that that took place at 357 Greenfield Road, and I know Casey did a little bit of research on this as well about the process, and um, we want to address that. And do you um, do you want to tell us what you know and where this came from? Well, that's that's kind of the problem. I don't know. Okay. Um, I did forward some information to. A couple of other staff members um at this point with the complaint i think the first thing that should happen is we should forward this written complaint to the animal control officer right we may need to coordinate that through the police department sure um, as i think the aco it falls under the authority of the police department yep but we will need to see an investigation report correct and then the now the administrative outline really identifies the requirements in the bylaws and then it references other requirements in chapter 40, section 157. Yep. So there's a there's a there's a process with the dates associated. Once you get the investigation back or the re written report, then you can call a hearing um, yes. to take to consider taking further action. Yep. Um, we do have to do publication to both the the owner of the animal, as well as uh, the person that made the complaint yep. and hold a public hearing. And this is one of those fairly strict types mm -hmm. of hearings it where is. you actually take testimony in a certain manner. Yep. Um, and you will, at some point you make a decision about the actions. The actions are limited. So mm -hmm. that I have not, spoken to our current town council when I did this in Ashfield. I very I got some clear direction from council as to how to proceed based on the identification and the testimony and the report. Yep. So my next step will be while while you guys vote to send this to the ACO, get some direction from council as to how the board should proceed. Yes, please. I, I would definitely direct that. I, I think, you know, I, I have read the complaint and I, um, I do believe that 
she had reached out to the um, animal control officer, the, the uh, person um, that sent the complaint in. And I would love to see the report from that. And then we can then start the process moving forward and then maybe check in with council on that process. So, okay. So you want the, you want this to be officially forwarded? Yes. Yep. I mean, it, 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 well, I mean, so that's, the chief that's and what the ACL. chief and yes. And I know that, um, I know the police were called just based on the, the, the complaint that I read, I know that um, some of the process is moving forward, but we have not gotten the report back yet. So I want to see, I think I've seen the police report, but I've not seen the uh, animal control officer's report. And so that's the piece that I'd like to have. It is. To it's, yep. With. It's number one on the list for the, for the following <laughs> procedure. So that'd okay. be great. So I know that the chief has requested the report from me. Okay. Thank animal. you. Yes. Great. So as soon as we get that, we'll take it up at the next meeting. And, and so you, you'll take up the report yep. um, and then set a hearing date yes. and proceed in that in the fashion that's really outlined. Yep, exactly. Any other discussion on that? No, I think okay. it's definitely warranted. Yeah, definitely warranted for sure. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we're, we need to approve a, a new list of poll workers. Yes. And so it looks like there's a, um, here we, the select board of the town of Deerfield by virtue of the authority vested in us by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby appoint the following poll workers for the tomb, uh, term beginning uh, June 1st, 2022 and ending December 31st, 2022. We have um, Gail Robinson and David Robinson. I wanna thank them for their service. Do you have a second? Well, yeah. Or just, motion, or do uh, you have? I'll make a motion, but first I have a question. Please. Um, can Can you explain briefly how many poll workers we have and what the mm. cycle of, of sure. appointments is, and will we be expecting to appoint more people in the coming weeks? You um, may. We you may, may, for sure. I think there, it, uh, go ahead and talk. So to the me. poll workers fluctuate depending on who can work the election, who's available, who isn't. And that also depends on the election itself. Sometimes, um, certain poll workers that are regulars may not be able to for personal reasons, or if somebody on a ballot is related to them, they may not feel comfortable. So you can expect to see changes in the poll worker list between now through December. And two reasons is you've got a primary and you've got a state election. So as the assistant town clerk and, and or the town clerk is planning for the elections, they're calling people and finding out if they can work or not work. So generally you see a large list, like they saw a large mm -hmm. list before the election, the town election back in April Definitely. or May, but it does fluctuate as people roll off the list or choose not to work. If they or are gone or something. Yeah. yeah. One final question. And just to educate myself about the process, the, the poll workers are given training or? The poll yes. workers work, work with the town clerk and they've given, they're given specific jobs with specific tasks. Yeah. And certain certain poll workers do and they they move around so mm -hmm. they reassign people as they go depending on how much coverage pe people can give i have not participated in a training so i don't know the details of that but That's i right. do know that oversight happens in the clerk's yeah. office we always have a constable you know you always on, have a constable staff. you always have the town clerk or assistant town clerk yeah. available and then the check people checking in check or in, grabbing the ballot check out. or yep. making sure people got they're using the new pads so yep. they're using and I actually oh, did the are. election okay. lately and they have a little sticker thing that I'm going to tell Jen. Interesting. She's um, going to hate me. Our, our elections are really well run. Very yeah. And, they're, and they're very very, well run. they have been very safe. Um, you know, every setup has been uh, accommodating what's happening with COVID. So mm -hmm. I have to say they've done a wonderful job. Yeah, for sure. So, and I think if people want to, you know, they're always looking for help. So if somebody you yes. know, is, is, is willing to serve, um, you know, reach out to the town clerk or stop in because we, I mean, there's uh, like, like Casey said, there's always people that can't serve because they're away or, or whatever, or on a bigger election, you need a few more people. You need so, more people, yeah. You know, because it's a long day and you're, you're, you're shifting people in and out. So, and one thing I will say is, so we're starting to plan for the primary. So we will need more people. It's a bigger setup. Yep. So if people are willing to work, I know that we would appreciate their assistance. Prim primaries in September. Primaries yeah. in September. Yep. And the general election is in November. Okay, well, thank you for that information. I thought sure. it would be useful. And yep. now I will make a motion to appoint Gail Robinson and David Robinson for the period 
beginning June 1 and running through December 31st, 2022. Do we have a second? Yes, I second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Let's see what you here to. No. Let's see. I know there's one in my packet, but I, know. I don't see um, one here for signature. Oh, it's underneath your computer. Where was it? Oh, here, you want mine? The opioid no, settlement. No, so. the, um, the signature for the poll workers. I'll, oh, I'll just I'm use sorry. this one. Oh. Yeah, I've got mine out already. Oh, you do? Okay. That's right. You got yours out. Oh, wait, here, take mine. Take mine. I'll leave this in. Hold on, Jimmy. All right, here we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. okay. That's the opioid spreadsheet. Just FYI. Jump to the bottom on this one. Um, so the uh, next item is the acceptance of the opioid settlement uh, funds. So this is a uh, um, funds that came down from a um, class action lawsuit, and each town in the well, a lot of towns across the country are, are getting money, but this is coming through our the Commonwealth. Um, it's the um, Johnson and Johnson funds anticipated subdivisions. So we should. Um, we expect these are estimates. You're not really sure what you'll get till the end, and it will be, you know, coming over five or six payments, um, maybe even well, eleven payments by the time it's all done. And it'll take until I think thirty. Let's see, July fifteenth, twenty thirty one. By the time we get our final payment, so it's small chunks of money over that time period, but it it may wind up around as much as thirty three thousand for the town. So we will at some point have to discuss how we'll. Uh, use those, those small amounts of money when they come in. But for now, um, I would entertain a motion to accept the um, opioid settlement funds and direct our accountant to create a special fund to- I'll make that this. motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? Um, i just like to say that when we do decide what we um, want to spend it on i think we should look at what expenses are incurred like buying narcan and stuff mm -hmm. like that i know the police department and the ems both for sure they're on the know. front lines of it yeah absolutely yeah. yep and if we get sharps containers and have yep. to dispose of sharp containers you know that's a board of health expense and, for sure yeah you know that kind of thing it would all offset, that together and yeah i mean we should just try to say look at what expenses we can offset Absolutely. First, Sounds great. and then do something else, maybe. Okay. So, all those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Uh, Carolyn Ness, aye. And then, so you, we don't need to sign anything on that. You're just going to do, yep. do your thing, right? Okay. So, um, okay, great. Thank you. So, we have, um, we have an appointment. Uh, annual appointment. Um, Pat Ryan has um, asked to serve on the Cultural Council and would love to have her do that. Um, I will make that motion and say thank you very much, Pat, to be yes. on the Cultural Council. We've awesome. had um, a vacancy on that for a little while. Yep, that's great. So I would um, second that motion. You may I have will, to abstain. I will abstain. <laughs> Um, Makes sense. We are we doing it for one year? I mean, how? What is her I'm term? I'm trying to find it's that. A, is there a letter on I it? I believe it's it? a one year. A one year. Appointment. Yep. So this no, is, it's a two year appointment. You're right. It's a two year appointment. So okay. are we doing it through? Um, uh, I mean, are we doing counting this year as one year, and then through the twenty three, or is it twenty four? Just see what the. I don't what this well. Is. Nor we appointing. didn't used to do local cultural council as filling terms like you do with election. Mm -hmm. um, I think you would, if it were me, I would start with a two-year term because okay. if we had to go back and restagger, yeah. we could. Well, we have two twenty. I think it says it's a two-year term. Have, we have two tw two twenty twenty. So you don't want them to roll off and. And we only have one twenty twenty four. So this should be a two-year. So this should be a two -year. till a two-year June thirtieth, twenty twenty-four. Correct. Yep, I agree with that. Yep. Okay. June 30th. Yep. 
business is yes. Providing she'll serve for two, two years. Um, so I Great. amend my motion to make sure it includes till June 30th, 2024. Okay, I'll, I'll approve that second. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Tim Hill, she abstained. Thank you. Great. Um, then the next, uh, you have, oh. we have Cindy Majewski. Are we done? We're not done with the interview process or are we? Um, I, I think Carolyn has a recommendation on that. Um, we did ask questions, um, and interviewed her. Uh, Jen Gannett was really great because poor Casey was in and out of several different meetings. And, yeah. um, so, Dick, so they did an interview Dick yesterday. And, Dick okay. and Jen and I was in another meeting and then I went in for a little while while you all were on a tour and mm -hmm. then came back out. Um, so I, I was in partially in that interview. Um, we're really excited. As you know, we love Lisa White. So getting somebody of that caliber mm -hmm. has been very, you know, I mean, you want to make sure. So yeah. we're really excited about that. And, um, she has, um, and she has, uh, met with Lisa White today and they've set up appointments for more transition and, um, uh, between now and the end of the month. And she, um, was over with talking with triad. So she has, um, going to go to the triad meeting and also connect with triad for their up-to-date list. So I'm really excited that we're going to already accomplish one of the main goals is to update our, you know, vulnerable population and at home list of people. Did Jen, did you have, Jennifer has do you have any she comment? Did you did the interview too. Do you have anything to add? Sure. Um, she was, you know, very well spoken, very well versed as a nurse. She's had 42 years of experience. She's had a, a variety of different types of nursing experience, which was very um, good to hear. Yeah. Um, she's comfortable in going into people's homes. She did home health aid before home health care. Um, she's, um, you know, good with crisis situations. She's good with um, just talking people down and being very understanding and caring. She's organized. I think she's going to be a good fit. Great. And um, can we say her name for the oh, public? Oh, Cindy, Cindy Mayeski. Thank you. Thanks. She lives in Sunderland. She's a, a lifelong Sunderland resident. Um, so the transition is going to be. Yeah. She, she also um, likes the part-time hours. So um, I think that that's important that it's somebody that isn't, you know, seeking, you know, full time and is comfortable with the part-time hours and it right. fits her lifestyle at the moment. That's great. And this will complement Mary Ellen Sloan, who also lives in town that handles all our Maven reporting and all that kind of stuff. So that's very good. Okay. So do we hear a motion to a point or? I'll make that motion. And I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you for um, serving our community and I'm looking forward to working with you. Oh, I'm pretty excited, actually. Um, Before you ask, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, any, on any of those placeholders? No? Okay. No, no. Yeah. There's the remote work policy. I'm oh, still yeah. trying That's to fine. No. That, bill hasn't, trying that actually... bill hasn't passed yet, right? Are you going to do the other appointments? Yes, we are. Are you going to go back to the annual stop? Thank you, Jen. That was my yep. thought we two are. minutes ago. Oh, I thought you... Um, yep. I, I also want to make a comment oh, please, about, please, sorry, please. about the annual appointments because Pat found um, something that she missed at the end of the day. And so she gave you all copies of the updated one. However, the one on the website does not have um, Tritown Beach on it. So if people are looking at that while um, okay. watching or listening to us, um, that is added to your packet. 
the Tritown Beach has been added, but it's not up on the page because it was towards the end of the day. Got it. Okay, yep. that's fine. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's, um, I guess let's go down the list. I don't know if we've done all of these already or in some of, I know we did some of, we did the police, right, in EMS, but we yes, have not done the these yet. police EMS, nothing okay. else. So um, I guess, do you want me to just read the names and keep, keep moving on here? Yes. Do you want, and then or I'll read all the names for all the committees and we'll take one vote for all of them unless anybody has a hold. If you hear a name and you want to put a hold on a certain position, please do that. And we'll take that up at the end, kind of like our omnibus budget right. <laughs> might work better. So um, this is our ADA coordinator. Uh, term expires 2023, Casey Warren. Ad hoc uh, senior housing committee. These are all 2023 uh, terms. Lily Dwight is the chair. Carolyn Shores Ness. Annalee uh, Wolfkuhl and Jennifer Remillard. Oh, and Pam Predmore. And Pam Predmore. Yeah. Sorry. I we did it. add her, right? Yes. I know I, we did that recently. Yes, we yes. did that. Yep. Um, the Ad Hoc Town Common Committee. Uh, these are all uh, um, 2023. Trevor McDaniel, Richard A. Benson, <laughs> uh, Gregory uh, Franceschi, Melissa Hale, Catherine Hart, Pam Hodgkins, Catherine Wallace is the chair, and Denise Schwartz, Board of Health Agents. Um, these are all 2023 appointments. Uh, Richard Kalaszewski is the assistant health agent. Alex White is our health agent. Um, Kevin Scarborough, Zach Smith, David Samoyski, Valerie Bird, and Jennifer Hoffman. Building commissioner is Robert um, Walden. Um, I think we should add Dick in the building as a building commissioner because he's no, nope. um, nope. Okay. He's a, nope. He serves as an alternate on occasion as needed. But, don't but we not have... a commissioner. Nope. No. Oh, not as a commissioner. I'm sorry. Alternate building inspector. Is he in there for? I don't think he is any longer. He's retired no. from that position. We're trying to get Dick to retire, right? Because he can't keep I, I know, but he's, he actually is filling in, though. I know. Well, we should hire somebody. <laughs> okay. Um, Burial agent would be Jennifer Wallace, 2023. Um, Capital Improvement Planning Committee, Casey Warren, uh, Carolyn Shores Ness, Jennifer Wallace. We need two members uh, that need to be appointed by the town moderator. Uh, we have Con uh, Ken Cutterback is um, recommended by the school committee. The finance committee needs to put somebody forward. And we have um, Denise Mason recommended by the planning board and uh, Charles Shattuck, um, recommended by the Board of Assessors. Uh, Community Preservation Committee, we need to select somebody from the select for the select board. So we have a vacancy there. Um, we also need an appointment from the town moderator. Um, we have uh, Ben Benson, uh, Richard Benson, recommended by the Historical Commission. The Planning Board needs to appoint somebody. And um, Frank Leone is recommended by the Board of Assessors. Alan Sweedland recommended by Open Space. We need um, recommendations by the Recreation Committee and Conservation Commission. So there's openings there. Um, Connected Community Initiative, this is our CCI group. Um, Julie Chalfont, Lily Dwight, Tim Hilchey, Kate Lawless, Andrea Liebson, Denise Mason, Trevor McDaniel, Darius Modesto, Carolyn Shores Ness, John Paturk Jr. Jennifer Remillard, M.A. Swedlin, and Dave Wolfram, Annalee Wolfkuhl, and Satu Zoller. This is the Conservation Commission. This is a five-member board, three-year staggered terms. Um, so for 2023 is Benjamin, um, is it Brian? Burn. Burn, thank you. Um, 2025 is Peter Law. 2022 is William Marapisi, is the clerk, but only until July 30th, because I think he's moving out of he's town right out so town. we're just yes. keeping him so we will have a vacancy after yep. as of yep august 1st and we also have a second vacancy for 2024 Which and then, yep and then we have for 2024 is Catherine devlin um and then uh sean libby for 2025 and then he'll be a new i think a new member as of june as of june 1st yeah, he's been sworn in. He's, he's been sworn in. Actually he's actually appointed. We appointed him longer yep. so that okay. he can cover that space. Three years Great. and one month. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, the Cultural Council, we have um, for 2023's uh, 
Roberto uh, La, La Barbara. Um, 2024 is Olivia Leone. 2023 is Denise Schwartz. And we've just appointed Pat Ryan for 2024 for a two-year term. The Mer um, let's see. Let me skip over that a second. Um, the emergency 911 coordinator is Darren Melnick uh, and William Swayze. Energy Committee, we have um, Lori Busada, Stephen uh, Iper, Greg Franceschi, David Gilbert Keith, Jay Stryker, M.A. Swedlin, Stephen uh, Sabota, and Reed Predmore. Fence viewers, Albert Olmstead, and we have a vacancy if anyone wants to view any fences. Um, Forest Wardens is Kevin Scarborough, uh, William Swayze, and Derek, Darren Melnick. Franklin County Solid Waste Management District Rep is M.A. Swedland. Franklin County Transit Authority uh, Select Board designee is Robert J. Decker III. Franklin County, uh, Franklin Regional Council of Government Rep is uh, Trevor McDaniel and Casey Warren. Uh, just a hold on that to make sure that everyone still wants that. Um, just hold here. And then uh, FERCOG uh, Electric Electric. Electricity Aggregation Project was, was uh, David Gilbert Keith and Stephen Hyper. Gas and Plumbing Inspector is Stephen uh, B. Baranowski and Mark Wendelowski. Hazardous Waste Coordinator is Lynn Rose. Historical Commission is uh, Bonita Conlin, Jennifer Remillard, Henrietta Colcott, Richard Ben Benson. Keeper of Cemetery Maps is Kevin Scarborough. Uh, Keeper of Town Clock is Robert Ouellette. Is Robert Willett still keeper of the clock? Um, because we had somebody coming in to fix the clock, but put a hold on that. I'm going to put a hold. Right. I just don't yeah. know if that's still happening. Um, well, he he oh. did. Jen, I remember last could, year, Jen. I think yeah. I remember we changed it. Yeah, so we have the guy from Pennsylvania that actually comes and and winds it and takes care of it, but we have somebody locally who does daylight savings. Okay. And he's the person that's going to come and adjust it because of it being off 22 minutes. So we'll still keep Robert. We'll let as the guy, he must be from Pennsylvania then who does yes. this round, does so, the rounds. Okay. Sounds right. good. He had, he, 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 um, the original guy, uh, retired and he trained somebody new that's and that that's Robert. So. Robert's oh, Robert. Will let, he's the new person. New oh, no, no. He's a local guy. Oh, okay. And he's around, but he doesn't, he's not qualified to do like the actual cleaning, right? Got right. It. That guy's from Pennsylvania. But just the yeah. keeper of the clock. Okay, good. So my hold is taken off there. Um, local census director is Jennifer Wallace. Open space committee, um, Susan Hoff. Lynn Faith Rose. Alan Sweetland is the chair and Andrea Weepson. Planning board appointed her. The recreation committee is Beth Brown. Gretchen, uh, Bajeski, Chair, Jeff Galley, uh, Eileen Skirbisky, uh, Bannock, uh, Rod Warnick, and Rebecca Zoli. Register of Voters will be Joanne M. Carney, Jennifer Wallace, and Alex uh, Hershander. Um, SCEMS Board of Oversight is Carolyn Shores Ness, Fiscal Agent. Um, our reps are uh, Tim Timothy Hilchey, Tim Hilchey. Rep to the Scams Boo and um, Matt Russo is the member, Matthew Russo. Surveyor of Lumber and Wood, Kevin Scarborough. Uh, Superintendent of Public Works Operations, Kevin Scarborough. Uh, we have a swim program committee. These are vacant. So are we looking to hire somebody or what, how's that going? I'm trying I think to think. We need to talk to Tritown about okay. that. Okay. Let's, yep. Yeah, we'll just have a hold on that. Nobody your point. Uh, the Town Building Advisory Committee, we have Julie Chalfont, um, Carol Morrow, John Pachurik, Kevin Scarborough, ex officio, Greg Franceschi, Bill Hildreth, and Matt Russo. The Assistant Town Clerk is Jennifer Wallace, Interim Treasurer Collector, Sarah Kimball, Town Council, Mead Toller, uh, Tollerman Costa, LLC. We have a Town Memorial Forest Committee, which has um, three vacancies on it. Um, I would like us, if um, it goes a couple months where we don't have any volunteers, we, in the past, the select board has been uh, okay. the town force. And the reason why is because I would like us to um, see if we could 
get a forest management plan on mm -hmm. our pine pine um, hill. Okay. I mean, uh, Compton Ridge by Pine Nook off yeah. Pine Nook Road, um, forest land, so that we can um, get some money for different management programs okay. up there. There are invasives that are happening, and we can have that expense be taken care of if we have a forest management plan. Okay. With you on that, sounds good. Tree warden and moth superintendent is Kevin Scarborough. Um, Tri Town Beach Commission is Ken Ken Cutterback. Diane uh, Kolkowski and uh, Patricia Ann uh, Pyrog. Veterans Grave Officers John Sis. Wiring Inspectors Wayne Shaw and Eric Henderson is the alternate. Workers Compensation Agent Unemployment Compensation Agent is Sarah Kimball, Assistant. Zoning Board of Appeals will have a vacancy. Um, and I believe that is it because I don't think John Staberski is continuing. I did get a letter of resignation from John. So I know that he's not. You need to send that to me and to the template. Oh, he didn't send one in. Oh. I, if, to, if Sarah in. has it, she okay. hasn't said anything to me. Got but it. We would like it for the record. Yep. We'll send it on over. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I thought you got Sorry it. Sorry about that. So, so um, before you make any motions, I have a question. Of course, please. About the open space committee. <clears throat> um, uh, sidebar that says the select board appoints 305 and the moderator appoints 205. And we have four names and we have a planning board, planning board appointment. So I'm just confused. Yeah, it does look confusing. It looks like there's a vacancy. There is, I'm sure. Yeah, because there should be five people total. There's four. The planning board was one of them. I don't remember what the bylaw said, other than what's well, listed I don't, here. I don't know who the moderator appointments are and who are appointments because um, it, that that committee has been fairly stable. Uh, although Andrea is appointed by the planning board. Andrea is on from the planning board. Alan, Lynn, and Sue Half. Sue Half are appointed by the select board. If there are appointments from the moderator, we may not be aware of them. Right. I don't okay. think we've had any. So there's two spots. That's what two I recall spots. from the last year, because remember, we had to do the open space and rec plan. Uh, I, oh, that's, that's true. So right. you, you may not need the entire, if there what is a member missing, as long as you have a, the ability to have quorum so mm -hmm. that you can proceed. Yep. yep. Okay. <clears throat> I reached out to someone uh, that we discussed in the past about a vacancy on the CBA. But okay. The conversation hasn't moved forward, so I'm not going to mention the name. Of okay, the that's fine. Um, oh, so I was going to check. I, I had a hold on me for the fur hog. I don't know if you still want me to do that. Um, Trevor, do you do you mind keeping no, going? I don't mind. Um, because you know that's. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Uh, does it's. You yes, know, another monthly meeting. <clears throat> and no, I'll explain good. to Tim why I'm the alternate. So we have the town administrator as the alternate. And one thing that happens is, so I fill in for Trevor if he can't be there, mm -hmm. but I also serve on two committees. They often yeah. have, like towns yeah. do, they often have a need finance. for people to serve. And I find that it's finance committee and personnel board or personnel committee. Yeah. Yep. And the two things often go together. It's, mm -hmm. it's They do. It, it can be useful, but it's up to the board how they want to handle that. Well, I, I, I think it's really important that we have, um, you know, regional participation and you've been really good about going and participating, Trevor, so I have no issues having you continue. Okay. Um, you know, it's, that's how we get stuff done is through relationships. Yep. So that's true. Um, I think it's very important. So okay. thank you. Okay. We'll get Tim signed up for stuff. So no, don't worry. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start with skins. I've, I've got my first skins meeting coming up. Uh, South County EMS for you folks who don't know what skins is. That's right. Uh, <clears throat> fence viewers. What's a fence viewer? Yeah. So, I know that um, okay, take it away, Casey. I actually know this answer. I found this out on Black Island last week. So, I don't know. I don't think we have a, an ordinance, um, but fence viewers actually go out and measure the height, sometimes the width and distance of fences to adjacent properties. And the only reason I know is they had a fence viewer, but they actually, the Historical Society on Black Island put a note up on one of the lighthouse displays they had. It said the fence had to be four and a half feet tall. 
and it had a certain distance that it had to be from the, the property line. So that's the only reason I know that. Interesting. But that question comes up every year. Yeah. No, the, and the other reason, the more traditional reason, not so much height than setback, no, but where was is. to make sure that it was maintained in a proper, um, you know, form so that you know it did keep the animals in yeah yeah and not trash people's gardens yeah or you know crops so, and so that that if you have cows it's, running around like they do on black island they needed to be a certain kind <laughs> yes i just thought that was well a it's, it's 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 a holdover from the old days yeah so it's kind of very cute. much the old days yeah it was kind of cute so well, this uh let's see the next thing i had i think um is Let's see, management. Were we making changes there? Um, I thought we were. I thought we already approved that, didn't we? Or, or did we I thought not? we changed it too. Doesn't seem like okay. it's in the right order. Um, well, we, what we were going to do is we could we could be on hold for that if we want. But why don't we just hold that and then have a discussion yeah. about that? Is that coordinator or is that uh, management? Management. Okay. It's emergency management. It, we, EMD, we emergency were, management director. Mm -hmm. We were trying to figure mm -hmm. out ways to make um, more more viable for uh, you know more more zip for emergencies. There's a lot of coordination that goes through yeah. certain departments, and you know we noticed in the in COVID it was funny. I brought this to the board's attention that my former town Ashfield, the EMD really worked. He ran a lot of that response. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed there were other towns that did that too. Right. So it, it's it different towns work. handle it differently, but the EMDs were really connected to, especially the boards of health because well, they were trying to coordinate the response. What you're trying to do is, you, you know, we have like, when we have bad storms, we have yeah. that team approach. Mm -hmm. The whole point is to add more oomph to the team and make sure the team um, meets on a more regular basis rather than just, oh, the storm's coming 72 hours out, we're gonna have a team meeting. We, we need to do more things with drills. I'm the only one that went to the dam failure mm -hmm. drill. I, I mean, it, you need to have people be- Not just when it's an emergency. Right, it, has to, it should be all, disciplines and it needs to we need to restructure how we're doing our response because mm -hmm. like casey says it's you we want to do more all hazards right right and not just okay right it's not yeah it's not stuff. just like tropical storm right. sandy this really needs to be for all hazards because that's what they learned in covid right the response coordination through the emds really helped connect people well, what, there's all these AARs. Is that we're doing an AAR for Homeland Security. We're doing an AAR for the FERCOG. We're doing an AAR for MAPCO. I'm involved in so many of these meetings already. And, that, and hopefully in the next few months, they're going to compile the results and recommendations. And I'm hoping that we can transfer some of those recommend, recommendations to the local level. And it will take a separate meeting for us mm -hmm. to just have that discussion. Okay. And so I'll make a motion to approve um, um, all these appointments and that we're holding emergency management. We are holding um, ZBA. ZBA. Anything and else that I just swim program because there's no, there's no, there's nobody there yet. No, but okay. I think there's a discussion that we had. So um, anybody second that? I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Epps, aye. Thank you. Um, okay, so we'll have a little, little more discussion on those. Um, so do you want to do the town administrator's report? I know we have mail, but people can read that. I don't, do we have to discuss any of that in the meeting? Are, are we doing the um, Other than, new pro? Yes, yes. I've got so two, you have two, two items upcoming. that I anticipated. Oh, yeah, I'm but I was sorry. Gonna, I, I shifted his to the end. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yep. sorry. I jumped ahead. Oh, it's okay. I do want to um, thank um, Deerfield Academy. It's in our mail for their um, $67,250 um, uh, second half, half year gift, second half gift for FY22. 
um, thank them for all they do for our community and um, and then we can talk, I guess, um, why don't we move into, do, do you want to do your town administrator report first and then we can do these other things? Or? So I was on vacation, so. Congratulations. Well, it was Glad a few you days. Went. It was nice. Bet. Get off the boat and your, your whole mood changes. Yes. Um, so I wanted to give everybody an update on the home rule petitions. Um, our bill for splitting the treasure collector town clerk okay. now has a number. It's H period 4846. It has been sent to the Senate clerk, but it will go back to the House for further action. And I think I sent everybody a forward of Natalie's email, but she really explained yep. what the process. the process is. It's very it's long, complex. And it's long. It's long. So, <clears throat> so we have to get it. You have to get the house clerk to get it assigned, and then they have to work with the rules committee. Then they have to do hearings, and so we get a chance to submit testimony or participate. Mm -hmm. um, and then once the committee reports favorably on the bill, it goes to steering and policy and scheduling, and so it can take a bit. It won't happen this year. Um, Not before I'm July. Um, but the point is, is we need to make a pivot on this in this case mm -hmm. and so my request to the board based on that i've talked to the financial department and jennifer and i have been working on vacancy notices for temporary hires for treasure collector and for the town clerk um, and so i'm waiting on some information from council i'm wondering if the board would approve me putting those vacancy notices yes, out absolutely. now this would be temporary contract basis until we have some answers yep. that doesn't mean we wouldn't do a hiring process it just because we right. would do the notice but um we would it might give us an opportunity to not only get some town clerk help first and because the election's coming right but start to get an idea of what the market's going to Exactly. In terms of who's out there, money. who's interested. Absolutely. Right. I just, and we're yeah, hoping, we need the help. Sarah and I were talking, um, we're hoping that maybe a retired town clerk would be willing to help us for, you know, up to 19 hours a week. Right. Just get us started. I think that would be helpful. Uh, I'm all for that. Anybody so else? if you guys wouldn't yep. mind that. No problem. Okay. No problem at all. Yep. We'll get how, that started because we're pretty much ready to put it up. Facilitate. Absolutely. Yep. So we're ready to do that. Um, there's one other bill that's still hanging out there and John's connected directly to it, but I've asked Cameron from Gen Senator Conan-Preferred's office to give me updates. So that bill for Officer Sebelia to extend eligible service to 75, yeah. it's still sort of in a holding pattern. The Senate approved seven, 73 years of age, so it's right. going to go back to the House and there'll be some more discussion on it. Okay. But I wanted you to be aware of that. Yep. I saw that. So yeah. we're getting close to the end of the fiscal year. And that means Brenda and I are going to be sitting down and rolling over a bunch of stuff. I want everybody to know that I'm starting to reel Jennifer into that because she needs to start taking over some of the daily bills payable work. Okay. Um, and we had started working on that back in October but now that we're at the end of the fiscal year, it gives her a good yeah. sort of snapshot of what it looks like. And yeah. she's shaking her head at me right now. I can just see it. Um, <laughs> she said, no, I'm not. <laughs> she's happy about that. Good. Okay. Um, uh, How, how's the website going? Jennifer, would you like to report on the website? No. We're busy. <laughs> okay. It's been, it's challenging. So we, we have a launch date. I've just requested an extension of our launch date because we had some staffing issues and I wasn't able to. Right. She's, I mean, we can't do everything. At yeah. Once. So I've, I've asked them, I'm working with them. I'm trying to do um, either two half days or a full day and maybe two full days of extra training. I may be working at home to do that just because then I have complete okay. focus. Yep. And not my revolving door. Right. But, um, you know, be able to train some other people. But um, we, from April until now, we have to, anything we put on our website, we have to do ourselves and we have to transfer to our new website. So it looks great. It's very user-friendly. I think you're going to love it. It's just, 
<laughs> Pat and I are like scared to death of deleting everything. So um, it's just going to take a matter of time of us just to get used to a, a different platform. But it's we're working at it. It's going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Great. So, so I do have a question for the board. Um, and I was thinking about this after I had a conversation yesterday. It may be useful. I want you guys to know that Jennifer and I, I'm going to ask her to follow up on this, see if we can get some help from them on a contract basis to transition some of those documents because we are so, so short staffed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something you can work on Friday, yep. Jennifer. We'll talk about it at work. I didn't get a chance to talk to you this afternoon. So just know that that's sort of in the offing if we have trouble transitioning documents. We don't want to push it out too far. On the other hand, Jennifer's really handled all of this and she right. has worked with everybody and they've done a great job. Remember, uh, I've only handled it if everybody loves it. Right. That's exactly She's right. She's going to step back and hold her hands out. That's a yawn. Yeah. I'm going to make sure this is not going long tonight. So we, we also have closures of a lot of grants that are coming up. We have the MVP closing at the end of the month. We had a contract extension for a little bit of work that needed to be done for the soil section of our MVP grant. So we just literally, Andrew Smith just got the signed response on the contract change to me this evening before the meeting started. So we'll be working on that, but that reimbursement is gonna come up in the next week or so. We've got two bills left and then the reimbursement's due at the end of July. So I just want people to know that this is the sort of stuff so and it lot. takes hours. It does, I know. Um, I know. That comes with these grants. Yep. Um, I will also, let you know we're working on the shared streets and spaces grant that we got for 113,000. Yep. So that signed paperwork gets turned in. Um, the LC, LWCF land and water conservation grant paperwork was turned in. Yep. So we're turning this stuff over. It's just lately the documentation has been pretty extensive. Yeah. So it I is know. taking more time. Yep. I, I work to finish the soil health um, mm -hmm. report with Eric today. So, yep. and Keith from RD, uh, regenerative, regenerative design and Chris are, are, we're working to sort of make yeah. the modifications in the contract so that we could capture the two small items that need to need to be deliverables. There okay. were a slight change from the original contract. Um, all right. And then we also, will be, I believe we have it and Jennifer can confirm this. We have a finance committee meeting scheduled to handle all the transfers. So you won't see those for at least a week. Okay. Because Brenda and I have to sit down. Do you and go know, over. Do you, when are they meeting? They're meeting, Jennifer, they're meeting the fort, fort. They're meeting the same day that you guys are meeting and they're, um, let me, uh, let's see, it's July. Let me get my calendar out. July 13th. So that's the same day, it's same day you guys meet. So they're going to meet in one of the other rooms and go through the transfers. Um, at this point, Brenda and I don't have a full out list of what the encumbrances and carryovers and transfers are going to be. Okay. But we, when we go through that, that will help us determine what the, what the um, necessary transfers are, are going to need to be. And we'll probably do a combination like we did last year of transfers right. between accounts and, and transfers from reserve. Yep. So we've okay. got several things that have already gone through the reserve fund, which is right. what the finance committee oversees. But when you would do a transfer between accounts, both committees have to sign off. Yeah. So we'll get you that closer to your next meeting, because as you know, we have to have everything done by the 15th of July. Yeah, a lot, lot to do. So there, there's a lot ahead of us. And I just want everybody to understand that, you know, this happens a lot. We are understaffed anyway. So Jennifer and I are discussing some ways to mitigate those issues. And thankfully we have had help. Alex has helped us. Yes, Alex thank you, Alex. Better. Thank He's you. He's been doing a lot. Um, but we need to make sure that Alex doesn't lose his entire summer either. So um, we're going to do some, some thinking and we may present a reorganization plan to you. Okay. Sounds good. Um, do you want to hit on the new pro? Different so stuff. new pro this so there are two items unanticipated one is the new pro extent it's a first amendment of the let me just flip to it so i can read it 
Actually, there's three items, one item. Um, so there's a first amendment to the purchase and sale agreement. And really what this is, is for both parcels, uh, affectionately known as the Oxford property. Yep. It's for both parcels. And what it would, what it would do if you agree to it is it gives an extension so that they can complete their due diligence and submit the report to the town. Right. <clears throat> so okay. So we, and this was something that council and I discussed because we hadn't received that report. Right. Um, and it was a stipulation in the PSA. Yep. So I would respectfully request along with council that the board vote to approve it and sign it, please. Yep. I will make a motion that we, um, we agree to the due diligence period is set forth in section 5.1 of the above mentioned purchase and sale agreement be extended from June 13th, 2022 to June 23rd, 2022. And the time of the closing um, as set forth in section seven of the above mentioned purchase and sale agreement be extended from July 13th, 2022 to July 25th, 2022. Can I, um, yep. I just have a question. Um, when in August is our um, loan payment due? I mean, you know, the band that ex um, I thought it was August. So if, if I, we have a closing on the 25th, I don't remember. Are we going to get our money in time? We don't have to renew well, that band, do we? That, no, we no, actually renewed we it renewed for six it. months. Yeah, we renewed it for but six I'll months. But I'll get Brenda to tell me okay. the exact date because I can't remember. Yeah. All right. I just don't. No, it was, we have enough time. Okay. Yep, I'm pretty sure. I, just didn't want to I think we did it for six months. We did. Have us have a cost of another band. No, exactly. No, we yeah. won't. No, okay. we were. All right. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember the date, but I, I believe it was six months. So um, do I sign this or do, do, who's? Um, yeah. The board should make a motion to either sign it. I think it's got it's one, one signature. signature. So my yeah. suggestion- I, I make the motion um, that we approve the extension for due diligence um, to July 25th, 2022 for the closing and um, authorize the chair to sign. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I guess I'm going to keep that report. And then the other item is the FISC um, at all APR do, uh, docs for signature. And Jennifer can explain that. Hey, go, Jennifer, go. <laughs> so these are the final documents for the FISC APR. And um, there are three people at the moment, I haven't heard from Michelle Padula, that are getting three separate checks for the whole amount. And um, so we had two tasks left in order to complete um, this um, transaction, and that's for the board to sign and please print your name, sign next to it, yep. and then I send this over. They compile the applic or the um, yeah the applicants the fists signatures will be on a separate paper, so those are blank for us, and then they compile it all and they'll send it back to us. So. So uh, do I hear a motion to sign or do you need a motion and a vote on this? I would just do a sign? motion and a vote. Okay, motion to approve the um, I will make APR. a motion to approve the um, uh, APR. For the FIS property? For the FIS property. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, I had the third unanticipated item was um, the safe streets and roads for all. Um, I just wanted to clarify that for um, Denise, who is working from the CCI and talking to Alice Rich, that you have an action plan and then you have an implementation plan. This is just another streets. So clearly we've always had issues with the force, you know, the four-way stop. And, um, but I was thinking we could list the four-way stop, even though we don't, you know, we know we're not gonna get that resolved unless we meet with DOT and we have consensus and all that. But, um, cause this is federal money, this is not state money. So it might end up being able to do something for that four-way stop. But clearly we could do bicycle lanes, one of the things. So if we talk about putting in for bicycle lanes and some other 
CCI kind of related thing that we want to do, would that be okay with the board to move forward with that? I'm not sure quite what you're asking. Well, can I, can I see plan? if I'm, if it, let me just clarify because I have a, this has been a question that's come up before if I'm hearing you right, Carolyn. Are you asking whether we should, whether the board should pursue that grant to do bike lanes you have between to have the four action, way up North Main Street or South have, Main Street? Well, you have to, you have to have an action plan to qualify. Which we don't have. Yeah, I was right. looking at that. So this is just, the first step is to create an action plan. Okay. And we have enough information from charrettes, all this stuff over the years. Mm -hmm. So you can say the four way stop, bicycle lanes. I mean, we can come up with three or four action items and just put in. And then once you got, you know, what they have to do is you have to develop that as our priority and it has to come back to the select board to just say, yes, this makes total sense. And then it goes into the, um, this grant system. And then you can put in for implementation. Right. Down so, the road. so it's a three-tiered process. My question is, is do we want to, and, and I hesitate just because I'm thinking about complete streets mm -hmm. because you don't want to re-engineer something. I don't necessarily think the action plan is an issue. I think if we get to the second step, right. where you're doing the planning design, then you have to have your complete streets ready. Match. Like that concept there. Right. So the action plan I would I would move forward with yeah. for sure. And, and then the come back step. and tie it in with the DOT stuff and this yeah. complete streets. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to pull together all these separate. Who's going to do that work though, the action plan? Um, well, um, Denise has been talking to Alice Rich. Okay. And, and apparently it's, if, especially if we like go through all our material that we've been doing for, mm -hmm. you know. We have a ton of it. We have a ton of stuff that pe all the different committees have done. So all it is, is Alice is just going to pull it together. Okay. Present it to us to vote. This is a good action plan. Right. And then it goes in, it gets approved. And then we are like, all of a sudden we're going to be eligible for you know Some all the, imp the okay. implementation part of yep. even if it's just a bicycle lane you know we want bicycle lanes well it's about five thousand dollars worth of paint and right you got to measure it out and you yep. know and that's another couple thousand dollars so we, you know eight or nine thousand dollars we could get the bicycle lanes finally done right i mean that's the thing that popped in my mind immediately well right. Let, we're going to get those wonderful crosswalks by right. Frontier. Let's put in the bicycle lanes. Okay. You know, and then, so let's and, look at the action plan. I'm yeah. gonna, I support that. So okay. I, My just, question okay. is where are we going to pay for the Alice Rich Lewis to be? That's oh, a good the question. I don't know. That's do we have we, any? Before, before we well, say yes, we want to do it, amount. we need to find funds to it, do it. Let's get a dollar amount. Yeah, put Denise forward. Is, yeah, but Denise just needed us to say we were interested so she can continue to talk. To and Alice, get a quote to get a quote to okay see how many hours let's get a quote then. And, and how much you know i have a lot of stuff piled up in different piles at my house so i just have to pull out a few things for alice to look at you have a few things like the mm -hmm. town common reports and stuff i mean you just we just have to pull enough together for alice to put to write up but an action plan. Just, and then yeah. so have Alice give us a number on what that yeah. would cost. And then and, we could approve and the it. Idea so is if we she'll have... give you a number that includes okay. research. And see where and we can so get that's money the first step. She okay. has to do a little research. All this right. is our experience with uh, Community One Stop. Right. Um, I think we've signed everything. Our next meeting is scheduled for June 29th. Oh, Alex. Alex. Hey, Alex. Hey, I'm so sorry that I am late. I was just on the phone uh, with. Uh, uh, issue. Um, so I just um, had to take that phone call. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. But he just wants to do a little report. If Go ahead. Down, sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, first thing I want to say um, PCR testing, it's going to be closed next Monday because of Juneteenth. Yep. Um, June. So Juneteenth, federal holiday. Yes. Observed. Um, Thank you. And just want to let you guys know about um, uh, housing needs, well, two housing issues. Um, Rico Road and Grave Street. Alex? Yes. Move the mic, please. Okay. No. Sorry. Um, so is that better? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, so just housing. Um, uh, so I did two uh, housing inspections, um, one on uh, June 6th. The other one was um, last week. Uh, can't remember. 
so one is doing an order uh, to correct, another one is emergency combination. Um, and going to septic, um, I don't know if you guys have any questions about that so no. far. No, oh, okay. Uh, Greenfield Road, uh, 250 Greenfield Road, I'm gonna be doing a final inspection, hopefully, for the septic this week. Um, a lot of food trucks that, um, did last Friday, uh, DA. Yep. Uh, this week I went to, to um, finish up my lead, lead determination field components, and now I'm, I'm certified as a lead determiner. Uh, um, so camps are coming up for the inspections. Uh, DPH also, I don't know if you guys are aware that we're getting, Town of Deerfield's getting 900 COVID tests. Yes. Right. So um, I heard from DPH and they just sent that out on Friday. So we should be getting it. I don't know, Casey, have we gotten anything? Not yet. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So we'll be on the uh, lookout for that. And I think we agreed that we'll do uh, town departments first mm -hmm. and then we'll um, right. send it out to uh, residents yep. uh, as first come first serve kind of basis. Yeah. Okay. We just want to set aside enough uh, for police and it town is. hall and yep. highway so they can keep operating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, final inspect, well, I did a final inspection for five and eight, uh, five A and B Adams Court um, did a, a percolation test at 18 Stockbridge Road, a pool inspection at uh, the Red Roof Inn. They passed. The pool looks fantastic. Right. So um, really good. Uh, two Title Fives, uh, one at Fort Pleasant Ave. The other one was uh, 45 Sawmill Plain Road. Um, and when it comes to the nacho grant, nacho grant, um, sorry, I'm getting hungry. Oh, uh, um, I'm just going to interrupt you two minutes. Okay. I want to say thank you. Thank you to Casey. She has put in hours and I literally mean hours trying to straighten out our number. Um, our Sam's number. Account. Our Sam's no. number, our federal. Fingers section. crossed. We have the yep. incident in. I'll let Good. you know in a few days. Thank you, Casey. But Casey, that was an unbelievable amount of time. Yeah. Hours and hours and hours. Hours and hours. Yeah. Hours. There were several, Sarah, myself. Yeah, oh. you, we've been working hard to hopefully fix that. So we're trying to help. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Thank you. Because um, the money's been sitting there and we haven't been able to get it. So. Yeah. Um, the public health nurse, um, I think that we did a. What's the status on that? We, we just appointed, appointed her. her. Okay. Yep. And she we um, appointed was, a public health nurse. And she met with Lisa today. So that was really wonderful. Um, a volunteer to be come in and meet with Lisa because there's only two more Wednesdays. Great. And um, that's pretty much it that I have. Okay. Do you have any any uh, food truck action at um, at the um, brewery? Yes, I, uh, I got an application at Berkshire Brewery, yeah. actually. Oh, and what about Treehouse? I thought they were going to get yes, rolling yeah, along pretty cool. Okay. Um, it's actually supposed to be this weekend. Great. We're going to be doing that. Um, It'll be a great weekend for people. I know. It's going to be fun, I think. Good. So I'll, I'll go out and do the inspections. Um, okay. Not a problem. Well, thank you. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'm forgetting anything else. Any questions? Nope. No. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So we're we're going to have office hours have nine. Questions? Office hours are going to be nine to twelve on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. About that for you. And I know Trevor was anxious to end this meeting, but um, I have a couple of questions that Please. relate to. Uh, maybe these are things that uh, need to be taken up in another meeting, but um, on the uh, Hamshaw lumber uh, front. Mm -hmm. I had discussions with Doug Hanshaw about getting the site surveyed and gave him, after consultation, gave him a uh, verbal approval to talk to Harold Eaton about um, doing a survey of the site. Randy, yep. right? Yeah, so Randy he would be great. Right. Yeah, so, uh, and the idea is that the town would pay half the cost of this. It's approximately $3,000. Um, the issue is where are we going to find it? That's the problem, but, but you know, we, we, we need, we need to, we need to move forward. 
Yeah. You know, um, fifteen hundred dollars is fifteen hundred dollars, but it's holding up a whole project. It's like five hundred thousand dollars. I, I would recommend sense. that if we, we do not have any leftover line item money, that we can cobble together that we um, include that in a transfer from the finance committee. And that'll be our request. Yep. See where see where it shakes out after your meeting. So I would make a motion to support moving forward on that. Thank you, and put, putting so much work into that, Tim, to make that happen. I, I support that too, but I just I wanted Casey to have the meetings with Brenda to see where everything shakes out, where yeah, you can pull it from. You need to know where that is. First. Exactly, before we can approve a contract. But yeah, absolutely. I'm ready. I'm, I totally agree. Like, we yeah. can't have that hold up. Uh, yeah, but I mean, investment. worst case scenario, we just get a transfer. Yeah, a, a, a request. Yeah, a reserve transfer. Jen? I just wanted to be careful if other questions are things that we should maybe put on other agendas or are we just yeah. seeing all these yeah, questions? That's why, well, that's why I asked this. Yeah, I just, you know, because then if people wanted to hear about something and- For if, sure, yep, yeah. we'll do them later. So maybe we should report back at the next agenda Please. where that status is. Yeah. We can, but I, I want to make sure that Tim is aware that the consensus is yes on the on the on from the select board so that can well, I don't know if we can give a consensus because it wasn't on the agenda. Yeah, but it could be unanticipated. It is. Well, but we have time. We still have to do some research, Carol. Yeah, we okay. should. We I should think, do that. I think the sentiment's there, but I just yeah, let's but get. Do we let's want to wait for more weeks? Yeah, we have to. We still have to figure out where to find the money, Carol. So let's just get it done right. It's fine. And we don't know. You know, I don't know, I know how far out Randy we'll is. I know it's pretty weeks. busy. Of a meeting next well, week, we I'm a, sure. We have, a, we have a meeting on Friday. There you go. It's Wednesday. You got two days to post it on the agenda. What so meeting on Friday? We have a CCI, CCI meeting. meeting. On Friday. Well, that's already posted, right? Yeah. So you can put it on. No. She's like, no. <laughs> what? It's not no. posted? I don't know. We'll have, I'll check right now. She's <laughs> muted. She's glad she's muted. All right. I'm but in this meeting, okay. we'll no. violate no. everything else. Uh, the no, only, the only I, other question, question is reasonable. I just want to check I know. with Brenda. I hear you. The only no. question I have yeah, is they're you know, stir it up now, was, Tim. Was well, related but... to another, uh, another thing that's going to involve an action plan, and it was uh, in relation to $200 million worth of money that's for ro emergency road repairs. We talked about this. Mm -hmm. um, what do we need to do? And I know it's going to create extra work, but if we could get River Road repaired, it's worth it. Um, so what do we need to do in order uh, to try and um, set up the situation where we can actually apply by September 15th for money to do emergency work on River Road or other roads in town? That's the federal funding source, right? Yeah, I believe it is, but it- Yes, and it- <clears throat> Our, our criteria for that is anything related to water damage to our roads, which is almost qualifies every single road in Deerfield. Pretty so much. if we're really broadly want to say that, then that's- Is that hazardous mitigation? There's a lot of grants. I don't remember them. All. No, this is not, this is infrastructure money. This is a thing I forwarded an email, uh, you know, about this. I think we all may have received it, but there are various levels of- uh, Yeah. That was the one that seemed the most likely we would get. There's one for a zero emission buses, yeah. but yeah. we don't probably have right. you know qualification for that. Correct. And um, there was a third. Is it something we'd work with FERCOG on to try and help? I would think we would start with FERCOG because they have access to a lot more information about the federal grants. And they've got a lobbyist. Um, <clears throat> and I think they, if nothing else, they'll tell us, they'll give us an action, a, a, a path. Well. I would prefer to work or with somebody. Them. Okay, no, I mean that's work. fine. It's just you're you're got finally going to do straight, the work. straightening out our federal number, our SAMS mm -hmm. number. Well, that's the thing. We so, have to figure that out. First. So, your it will be our number will be updated and or active. I guess it wasn't considered active. Mm -hmm. So, our number will be active. So, if the FERCOG isn't able to put a grant together, we should. I mean, we have so many quotes for mm -hmm. damage. You don't need. Um, you know, we don't need to redo them. We just because we just need then, a grant writer. Yeah, we just need the person to. And so there are times that we need engineers and the shared streets and spaces. They actually, we went to the cog and they connected us to an engineer mm -hmm. that they had grant funds for 
So that's the reason I would ask the COG and, first. And we, ha and we got- Because we didn't have to pay for the engineering. Right, right. and we got 250,000 for that shared neighborhood mm -hmm. grant, which you know is the five communities. And that, one of the things is your streets and roads part of that. So, I mean, we're, the priority is the geothermal assessment, but if they are not gonna hire our technical assistance, we can look at landscaping or we could look at roads and bridges. I mean, not bridges, roads and culverts and stuff. But like would FERC hug help us with an action plan or would we come up with the action plan? I'm just trying to figure out because the Casey's response was we need an action plan. And, and yeah, you have to like start with an action plan. Relatively but easy. Alice, if Alice can, and, and so this but is the question. that's what we were just talking about. Is Alice that can Alice, investigate that, that action, action plan. Mm -hmm. I would that have action plan is what Alice is going to put together okay. based on digging out paperwork and old reports and stuff. And okay. we just need a line item to pay people with. So that's, right. the, that's the issue is always She's like- She's going to give us a quote based right. on what we but can- But I agree, what, we need- what, that's, that's, what Denise can come up with, and she's going to hand it to Alice. Alice will give us a quote, and then we'll- in next, Okay, I wasn't next understanding week. what that was about. And so. that's well, why Al, every year it's really important when we're doing our budgeting and everybody's look, you know, Oh, we don't need a grant writer. We don't need this. We don't need that. And we're trying to cut, cut. It's like, these are the issues that pop up all year long. Right. You get this notification. And if we don't have a line item set aside with, we put grant money, we put money aside for grant, some of this you stuff, have some money but it starts on January, January know, July 1st. Well, know, so we need to expand that line item next year so that we can take advantage and pay people because our staff is not we, we just, just don't, don't have, have capacity. the capacity right. so we need to bring in capacity and pay for people to help us get this money or and, we make a change in how we operate have, and there are certain things you have to do like the sam's number yeah. that was mm -hmm. hours and hours to make it active again right. yeah and Takes then for an action plan there. now we're of the, now if we do the action plan then we're going to be eligible for all this federal stuff sure. and so it makes incredible sense to mm -hmm. get this action plan done yep. so that we can then actually get the implementation line. Yeah, but so for every hour that Alice is billing though, there's hours that both Denise and I put in to work on that. Mm -hmm. And so this, when, when Tim I know. says, you know, how do we keep this going? Well, we've got to find capacity to do that. And right now we don't have it. And you got to right. include, and you got to include me digging know, around in my people. And, and my solution is, Come on. we need to find a way to <laughs> have the capacity and I don't know how we do that, but yeah. it, it's certainly something that's <laughs> perennial frustrated problem. the town for years. I so think Jennifer I think has Jennifer's that. offering capacity. New town building. No, she's you not. Say? <laughs> You're very funny. Um, no, <laughs> what I was going to say is CCI is on, you know, the, has their agenda and it is posted, but the select board doesn't have an agenda that's posted. Ah. Is it on the it's select board isn't part of that CCI posting? No. That should be standard because CCI yeah. has got all the select board members on it. So sure. every time you post something for CCI, it should say select board. Hmm. Gotcha, but it doesn't. So oh great. When's the meeting? I got Friday night off then. Oh, wait a minute. It does. No, it does. It says at the top, it didn't say it. Never mind. It says joint meeting with the select board. Oh, sorry, Trevor. You're back, Trevor. Oh, true. Trevor, you're listed. <laughs> no, there is a joint. It's it's posted oh, jointly. It is. It is. Sorry. Friday. You like Friday night. You're, you're Too bad. Friday. You have to show up Friday night. <laughs> Evening. Carolyn to go too. I'm going to be here. Uh, not I'm Friday night, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, I'm calling in. I'm oh, you're calling in. Oh, okay. I'm calling in. How are you going to eat pizza? If you're calling in. Who oh. scheduled that meeting? <laughs> All right. So uh, I think we need to do some investigation. Yep. We'll keep working on that. Right. Um, and one more item unanticipated. No, nope, there isn't any. <laughs> Sorry, there it's isn't. The Waitley 250th. I'm. Um, oh gosh. I I'm not going to be here because. Of course. My <laughs> my granddaughters are going out on an aircraft carrier. My son's aircraft carrier. Oh nice. Yeah. Oh. They're they're. Boarding at 5 Can we get a flyover for Waitley? <laughs> I don't know. They're boarding at 5 a.m. and they're coming back at 8 o'clock at night. So I won't be here for the Waitley 250th. Right. I'm a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make Please. a motion to adjourn. Can I have a second? <laughs> Somebody? 
I'll second it. All those in favor? Mr. McDaniel, I. Thank you Girl all. Have a great eye. night.